Uh, but at the top of the screen, you have the, the four different views of the calendar. And I, in the handout, I, I went in backwards order because I kind of feel like the year view, this is probably the least useful. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you can do hardly anything in this view, except you can click on a date and you'll get like the agenda for the day. And Joan, you're admitting people, yeah? Okay, so, and yeah, in this year view, if you wanna do the shortcuts, it's command four. Command one is day, command two is week, command three is month, command four is year. Can I ask so a if, question? Yes, Ross. Hi, it's, it's Ross. When you're in year view and you have those uh, events that are shown on a particular day, can you interact with one of those events by clicking on it? No. Doesn't give you anything. You can't do anything. Yeah, double oh. clicking it, nothing. So it is pretty so, useless. It is pretty useless. Yeah, so if you don't have a lot of events, you might find the month view uh, useful. I personally have way too many events. Like if you only had like one or two things a day, month view would probably be useful to you because you could see everything here. Once you get more than three, three, four things, you're going to get this more item. And then that's, I can't even click on more to get to more items. So I can double click on events in this view, Ross, and kind of interact with it. But I see. Almost useless. So I, I think most people spend their time in the week view or the day view. But anyway, week view is kind of useful because um, anywhere on this grid of, of the week, you can click and drag to create an event. And so I just click and drag and I released, and then I can type in this, add all the details, okay. And then it just creates the event for you. Usually that's how I create events. I don't know if that's how you create events, but I, I usually will, I usually have, well, you can see I have a lot going on always, but I usually have to find a white spot in my calendar to create an event. And then can once you I create find a, it. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. No, can you ahead. create an event over an event? Can I like that 1030 on Thursday, can I create something right over it or do I have to sort of finesse my way around that? Yeah, no, you can create an event over this. Um, the challenge would be when your events are really compact like this. Right. So, if I clicked above the event and dragged down over it, yeah, that's fine. I can It'll create a, an event there. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to delete that. Right. And uh, the other way you don't often think about creating events is to start at the end of the event and drag up. Oh. But that works too. So, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong screen. So, if you have the white space below the event, you can drag it up over the event. Okay, and then once it's created, it kind of spaces out. So that might be a tip that's useful. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if your calendars look like this where there's not a lot of white space, but if I, if I have to make like a 3 p.m. meeting here on Wednesday the 22nd, there's no way I can click and drag that. Because if, if I start to drag somewhere, the event starts to move, right? So that's not, that's not a good deal. Um, so Arlen, can you click on the white spot above that and then change the time to like 3.15 once sure. you put in a new event? Right, right. So that's one way to do it, right? So you, you make the event here. It's a, maybe an hour event. Um, no. Sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. And then I can click on the time and then change this to like, like you said, three fifteen. Uh huh. This and then it it, it will move like that. I would uh, okay. Change. Did you find your it's, it no. came back. So I that's it it oh that's kind of like a um like a two step mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. of creating events. The no. other easy way to create the events is with the plus button. So, how many how many of you guys use the plus button? Just wave or something? Never. Never. 
Never? Frequent, frequently. Never frequently? Okay, we're, we're split here. Half of you do and half of you don't. But the plus button is called quick entry. And it's, it's actually pretty good. So um, if I wanted to put in the event, July 22nd, sorry, can't type. 3.15 p.m. Um, and what, what did I call it? That was lunch, but second event. So if you just type it in like what they call natural language, you just type it like you would say it and hit the return key, then it'll add the event. So, Arlene, is that, is that the uh, same for the iPad, the uh, iOS system as well? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, um, so I, I can show you the iPad after this if you'd like. Yes, please. Thank you. Just okay. quick so that was the, the quick entry, right? Up here with the plus button. Um, that's probably your best. For me, that's the best way to get just a simple event that I don't want to add a lot of details. I like to add all the details into the event. Um, and so I'll show you, I'll show you why. Um, I'm gonna to switch to the day tab so you can just see that. So if I just wanted to see one day at a time. Um, and then let's see. Uh, Lita, you had the question about all these, all these holidays and things that appear? Yes. And I can just talk about that right now, but in the, in the right left sidebar, sorry, left sidebar, you have all the calendars, right? And you've got one calendar that's called holidays, U.S. holidays. Mm. So if I uncheck this, all of the holidays should disappear from the calendar. Okay. So if you, if you okay. want them back, you just check the box. And if you don't want them, you just uncheck the box. Okay, good. Thank you. Oh, while Thank we're you. there, Arlen, may I, add a, may I ask a question? Uh -huh. While we're there, how do you reorder? If you want to reorder those, the list, top to bottom. Say if I want Arlen, Mr. Arlen first, instead of AN at Hawaii WP. I'm, I'm not, I've never thought about that. Let me try to click and drag it. And I, I am able to click and drag. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. To reorder the, uh, yeah. I'm not able to drag the top one. I'm not sure why. But okay. I was able well, to drag this one. That's good enough. Thank you. Okay. Um, but Arky, what you can see is I've got different different accounts. So this is my uh, this is an exchange oh, yeah. account. So yeah. I I can't move my Google Calendar into the exchange area. Right. Um, you see. might not be you might not be this complex. You know, you might have all of your cal calendars in iCloud or all of them in in Google. I'm a simple man. <laughs> yeah, and and frankly, right, I've never right. I've never thought about dragging calendars because it's just never uh, occurred to me. Okay. I mean, why do you have a Google Calendar? Oh, I use a Google. I don't use the iCloud Calendar to be honest. I'm thinking I should start, but um, I was using Google Calendar long before long before I was using anything else and I just I just kept using it. So this Mr. Arlen is my is my main personal calendar. And then this is also a Google Calendar. Um, is this a Google Calendar? Oh, this is a Google Calendar for some of my work things and this is the Microsoft Exchange calendar for my my work meetings. Oh, okay. But you view them all within your Apple iCal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because I have to know. I have to know what if I you know if I have a personal meeting, I have to know that I don't also have a work meeting at the same time. So I have to mm -hmm. view all the calendars at once. Okay. Yeah. Um, you. you can see I've got a lot of birthdays in here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because I have this contacts item checked. So anytime you put a birth date into a, the contacts or your address oh. book, it will appear in your calendar. But to me, that's just um, extra stuff that I don't need to see on the calendar. Mm. I don't know, which is probably also why I don't ever buy anybody birthday presents. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll forget when you're birth. Actually, <clears throat> If you're that important, I'll put it in the calendar. 
and not not pull it from the context. So that's just a personal. We just won't do it. Um, I have a I have a comment. And now okay, you're hi. Down at the bottom too. Hi, hi, um, Joan. I have a Google Calendar because I share it with my daughter, and she doesn't. Uh, she's not an Apple person. So I have that for us to share, and then I use my, and I yeah you know, I use my i calendar for, for me. That's a good reason. He has an i calendar. It's not good. Thank you, thank you. That's a good good tip. But does that then, that then the Google and the i calendar will all show up in this calendar in the calendar, right? Right. So you order. can. It does. You can add them, and this is in your handout too. But if you wanted to add, like, say you only had, uh, you only had the 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 iCloud calendars. If you wanted to add another account, you just come up to calendars, add add account. Then you could sign into like your Google account to add it there. Mm. Thank okay, you. and so that's how that's how I've gotten all of these in here. I've signed into several yes, different this. accounts. Hmm. Okay, so the day view is probably one of the best views to add events. So I'm adding. I'm going to add events in the past, so it doesn't affect my calendar. But um, so if I add an event here. Uh, like I showed you, you click and drag. The day view gives you all the information on the right side and your calendar on the left. So now you can fill in all the information here, right? So like if you have a dinner. Um, I like to always add the location. And you just, so if you just start typing, this latest uh, version of calendars will let you search the internet for different places. So Happy Days is a Chinese restaurant in Kaimaki and my family goes there all the time. So I, I always pop this in here. Um, but when I click on that, I add the location to this event and then I get a little map in the bottom. Okay, so why would I, why would I even do that? because I've got also an alert when it's time to leave. So if you put in a lot of meetings and you have meetings that are away from where you, where you work or where you are, I always put in the, the location because then Google has, a, I mean, Apple has a maps service, right? So they know where everything is, they know all the traffic. So if I was actually gonna drive to this event, it could give me a pop-up. So from where I am to Kaimaki, it's probably 35 minutes with no traffic. But if there is traffic, it's gonna be 50 minutes. And so this will adjust that time, right? So I could just put in uh, an alert to leave 45 minutes before the event. But Apple will make this smart enough so that the time will adjust based on the traffic. Does that make sense? So I always yeah. put in, especially when I have meetings that are not in my location, I always put in the location so that I get this alert when it's time to leave. I like to also put in a second alert, like maybe an hour before, because I might have to, um, I might have to pack my bag or I might have to get some things ready before I need to leave. So if I have a second alert, I can pack the bag, and then when I get the time to leave alert, I can just leave. So there's a, there's a lot of neat things that you can do with these calendars. Um, I don't know if you've ever added invitees to your events, but like if I was having a dinner, and say I'm having a dinner with Joan, I'm, I can type in her name and put in her email. So she, when I click send at the bottom, 
it'll actually send her an invite to this dinner. It, this is, I scheduled it in the past, so I don't, I don't know if that'll actually work. But when you schedule events in the future, you can, um, she'll get a little notification. I don't know if you can see this icon. It's like a downward arrow into a box. Yeah. It's like your inbox. So whenever you get invited to meetings, like I just invited Joan to that dinner. And Joan would get this pop-up in her calendar. And now she can accept the invitation, decline it, or put in a maybe. It's more for like... Um, you know, if you're in like a corporate setting and you want to invite your your um, coworkers to a meeting and you want to know who's going to be there, you can add all these invitees or attendees to the meeting. Um, how, how do you know that Joan has accepted? If, if Joan actually accepts, this question mark will change to a green check mark. And if she declines, it'll turn into like a red a red dash, I think. So. Can, can you have it send all the invitees a reminder? Yes. How do you do the reminder like the day before? Okay, that's that's actually a good question. Uh, I don't know how I got this video call information. So if I change this appointment in any way, like if I change the time uh, or if I add a note, so in, in like a business setting, like, um, or even with like a volunteer group, like at the church, um, Pastor Bob, you could add like the uh, the meeting notes here in the notes section, you know, agenda, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And then you could see that I have a button called update. So update will actually send an email to everybody who's an attendee in this meeting and give them the update. Could be an updated time. It could be updated notes. So People in business settings have been using these kind of features all the time, um, but we just have them, we have them at our, our disposal also. So, so you could type in there, reminder dinner tomorrow, uh, 6.30 happy days, and then it will send it to whoever's in that list. Correct, correct. Oh, cool. Um, try, try it out and make sure it works. Um, so I'm using this with my Google account. So if anybody wants to um, try this with like an iCloud, I gotta find the time here. All right, let me see if I can put this in. Okay, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add a lunch here. Lunch with Joan. Okay, lunch with Joan. And I'm gonna change the calendar to iCloud. I just want to make sure that this works. Invite me too. Okay, we're gonna invite. Where where should we go? Tango. I like dim sum. <laughs> Tang Tango's good too. So when I've got this all set, I can hit send. And now you guys should get that in invite. Joan and Ross, you want to accept the invitation? So I, up I'm here. This is by text or by email? Uh, I put in your email, okay. so you should get an email. But okay. in the, in your calendar... Oh, in my calendar. Okay. Right here in the in the top left corner, you have the inbox. Right. And yeah. you should have a invitation there. Is that I correct? Have you have oh. 15 invitations. <laughs> you, Joan, I just see it. Accept. Okay. So Joan accepted. Let's see if it changes here. Oh, okay. So Joan went accepted. I got a green check mark. Ross? Has, it's it turned red. I don't know if Ross maybe checked. Uh, I maybe. said maybe. Ah. Okay. Hmm. I wanted to it's see a little bit happened. of a commute for you, Ross. Okay, so no, maybe no, it's the red. Maybe. Can I go back in there and change my mind and say I'm coming? Yeah. So up here in the inbox, you replied. You can change the maybe to a accept or a decline. And I, I just clicked on that, so I went to that event. All right. I just accepted it. Okay, I'm totally lost. I forgot where I made that. I do too. <laughs> what day was that? Monday, Monday at 3 p.m. 
Monday. Monday. Okay. Here we go. All right. All right. So Ross accepted now, and it's a green check mark. So let's let's try this out. Um, reminder for lunch. And if I click update, you should get something. I don't know if it's a little notification or if it's uh, an email that you're going to get. But you should get some kind of reminder. So you can't text these uh, reminders. It's only email. Yeah, correct? you'd have to do that. You'd have to do that manually and, and text people. Oh. So you can't put in the phone number, right? Right. Um, not automatically, but I put in Joan's phone number. I hope everybody has your phone number already. If not, <laughs> they do now. <laughs> I didn't receive an email from you, Arlen. Okay, it might not. It might not get. You might not get an email. You might just get a calendar. You should have gotten a this inbox thing. Should have said some kind of update. So this is all just going to ha happen in the calendar. Sorry, I miss Susie's email to me to come. Uh, I don't see it, and I didn't get a pop up. Is it in your text? Your I'm iMessage. Checking, I'm checking messages, and I don't have it in messages. Not seeing it. I wonder if the calendar itself is, has changed. If they don't use um, uh, Apple Calendar, will they still get a reminder? I don't know for sure, but they should because this is all just a normal calendar protocol. In order to see it, maybe you have to quit the, quit the calendar app and reopen it? No, it should disappear in a notification. Maybe that maybe that feature just doesn't work, but why don't I'm you guys sorry. try it and, and see? What did you, Arlen? What did you say you had changed? I'm sorry. I just I just put in here in a note reminder for lunch, and then I click the update. Okay. Which I thought should have uh, sent you a a little pop up notification. Yeah. I didn't get a pop-up and I didn't get anything in my email or messages and I'm looking at the uh, the screen that has the event uh -huh. it shows that you and Joan have both accepted well, Joan is still has a question mark I'm a question mark no I'm a yeah. check well, on my screen you showed as a, as a question mark really so what about your screen, Arlen? I, I can't yeah. see that right now. I I added her phone number in addition to her email, and maybe that's why she's got a question mark because huh. her phone number has not been confirmed yet. Oh, okay. So maybe it's in my messages. So do we have to turn on notifications for the calendar in uh, notifications? Um, I'm assuming you all have it turned on already because that's how you get your calendar notifications. Like you have a meeting or you have a doctor's appointment. I'm assuming you already have it on. Maybe not. Maybe that's why I don't get my notices. I wonder if you did something like change the time. Maybe that would come. Um, let's go 11 a.m. And update. Let's see if you get that. Okay, now you've all changed to question marks. Uh oh, I got something. Oh, so now, you know, I got Oh, time changed to next Monday at two. Arlen, uh -huh. under calendar notifications, there's uh -huh. there's invitations off, invitee responses off. So there's like six or seven things you can, I mean, six different things you can choose. So maybe, because my invitation's off and my invitee responses is off. Okay, are you on um, an iPhone? Yeah, just checking on the iPhone. Okay, part. okay. So if I have off invitations, I won't, I won't get your your notification, your Correct. update. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, you would get it. You just won't know that you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get the notification thingy. Okay. Right. Right. And also, there's an off and on for invitee responses. Okay, Marcy. So you had a question about time zones. Um, you might want to turn this on. Calendar preferences. How did you get there? It's under advanced, Arlen. Turn advanced. on time zone support. Turn on time zone support. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so Marcy, if you travel a lot and you do, you might want to check this box, turn on time zone support. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. And that, that should automatically, when you change time zones, it should automatically change, adjust your calendar because you're in a different time zone. Okay. So let's say I'm here and I'm going to a theater in New York in a month, like buy the tickets here and it and starts at eight o'clock. So if, if I put it in here, I mean, in Hawaii, is it going to show me eight o'clock when I get there or is it going to show me two o'clock in the morning? Okay. This is our other experiment. So I'm going to add an event. I'm going to use this quick entry and see if this will work. Um, so I, I don't know what to call this, but uh, let's put it August 4, 8 p.m. So I, I ended this by with EST. Well, it's EDT. EDT, okay. Daylight time. Yeah. Eastern Daylight Time, thank you. And so when it creates this event, it's going to create it at Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, so, so when I get there and it's and because you've chosen automatic time zones then when i get there it was it's not going to show it eight, at two o'clock in the morning it's going to show eight o'clock right 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 so let me create the event thank you and then okay so on my calendar it creates the event at 2 p.m right but when i get there on new york time or what you know eastern time it's your times are going to shift to Eastern time and That's then it's going cool. to appear at 8 PM. Okay. Because you changed it in the advanced thing. Oh, great. Thank right. you. And so that was, so time zones is like adding you to the time zone is helpful here. Right. So when I created the event, I, I put EDT so that it creates the event at Eastern time, 2 PM Hawaii, 8 PM Eastern time. But if you didn't write down the EDT because because you went to advanced and, and did the automatic thing, wouldn't it just do it automatically? No, because it wouldn't I, I don't. I don't think it would do it automatically. Um, okay. Would it work if you put in a uh, where it is? Lo location? If you said it's in New York City or to, at the Sullivan Theater or whatever that's called. Winter Garden. <laughs> I, I doubt it would work. <laughs> I doubt it would work. But um, try it. I put in put in some events with. Can we try it? Uh, Broadway musical. Location. Just put the Winter Garden and see what happens. The the Winter Garden. Yeah, the Winter Garden. That's where all the musicals are. I think you got to do the city or state. I think you have to do city and state, right? Sometimes no. I don't, okay, I don't think this is going to put in the location for me. The reason I, I, I don't use the quick entry for um, more complex uh, right. events is because it doesn't, it doesn't do the location thing for me. Whereas if I clicked in here, it would add the location and mm. search for the location and add it. I, I haven't had good luck here. Um, 9 p.m. So we're trying to. Try put New York. Just New York. It didn't add it to the location. Try adding it to the location now. But really, that's just going to add the location. It's not going to adjust. The time. It's not, it's not smart enough to figure out that I'm in a different time zone. So it's not going not gonna to do much for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, it's good. We found the li limitations of our of our resources here. Somebody asked about iPad. Sorry, let me. Okay. My husband's next to me with his iPad and we, we, we're always fighting over the laptop. So we each got an iPad. So we're using that all the time now for every. Okay. Okay. So the iPad is very, very similar to the map. You've got your different views, right? The week view, you can scroll around. Um, month and year views, pretty much useless. Um, in the bottom right corner, you have the inbox. 
which is what we were just taking a look at all the accepting the invites and those kind of things. In the top left corner, you have the plus button, which is kind of that, that entry. It doesn't seem to be like a quick entry like we have on the Mac, but you can just fill in all the details here. The, um, the two apps are very, very similar. So unless you have a specific question, I think anything we talked about on the Mac is pretty much uh, relatable on the iPad. You know, if I wanted to click and drag on the on the blanks parts of the calendar, I can create an event there, type in all the information, um, you know, change different things here and add it to the calendar. So and iPad is very, very similar to the Mac. Um, the iPhone is also similar. It's just a different screen size. So I don't, I don't think there's too much. Can you use dictation? So you're telling the calendar to put in a date and time, et cetera. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Um, do you guys use Siri? Does, does anyone use Siri? Yes, yes. Love it. Some, some of you use Siri. I do. I use it yeah. all the time. On your Mac or on your uh, iDevices? I'm absolutely never on my Mac <laughs> and mm -hmm. always on my iPad and iPhone. Yeah, yeah I, I feel exactly the same way. I hardly never use it on the Mac, but it's it there. It just doesn't understand me. It doesn't, I, I can't get it to like flow like it does on the iPad or the iPhone. How do you do that? You just talk to Siri. So if I'm not, like, say if I'm not in the calendar app, I just bring up Siri. Create an event. First Saturday the 23rd at 4 p.m. going to lunch with Joan, for example. Hey Siri, create an event for lunch with Joan on Saturday at noon. <laughs> Matsukawa. <laughs> yep. That is so cool. Can you also tell her to set the alerts and invite somebody? I don't think so. I don't, even don't know if we don't that. try. <laughs> the, okay, so the, I, I love Siri when she works. But the way she works is you have to like, you have to think in advance what you want to tell her. Create an event for Saturday and invite Joan Matsukawa and Marie Kunimura. Some people will get freaked out when the invitation comes. <laughs> <laughs> they okay, show up try. for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think I can say that all in one breath. <laughs> if I don't say it all in one breath, she's going to stop and ask me for information. If you hold the button down and talk to her, then she won't do anything until you let the button go. What button? If you're, if you're holding down, uh, like on, on, on your button. iPhone, the power button, you hold that in. The, one that, the button that you use to call up Siri, sometimes it's your home button, sometimes it's the button on the right. Create an event on Sunday at 11 a.m. and invite Joan Matsukawa. Yes. Let's go look at it. All right, let's go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> how badly we did. <laughs> All right. Okay, it is there. Here, I'll bring the iPad back over. Let's see. Okay. It worked. We've got an event. I just didn't put in a title. But Joan is an invitee. Mm -hmm. So it didn't say lunch, um, well, like just because just I didn't say event. I didn't oh, say lunch. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. I can't, you know, I honestly can't think about all those things when I'm <laughs> creating the event. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't do it in, in, enough, right? So, create an event lunch with Joan at on Sunday at eleven a.m. and invite Joan Matsukawa. I just I can't say that whole thing in one breath. So it gets it but if, if you're holding the button down, you can take two or three breaths, and then you could say, "Lunch tomorrow, 12 p.m. Invite Joan Matsukawa." So it's all about thinking how to how to get all that stuff that you want in there. And you're right. There's a there's a really a learning curve for it. Try and be if you want trying to be smart, of, you know, about about using her. You have to learn how to talk to her. My my Siri is an Australian male. It's more fun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but he will misunderstand you. 
<laughs> like most men, but him in particular. Okay. All right. So the event popped in here to my calendar. It just took a little while. I um, I, uh -huh. I got the, I got the invite by email. Can I get the invite by text instead? No. That's what we're trying to do. Let me let me um delete you. Delete you. And let me add you by phone number. So if I add you by phone number, um, tell us in a minute if you get a text message. Okay. Okay. Um, I kind of want to wrap up calendars if you guys don't have anything else. That was good. Okay. So Joan, just tell us if you get that invite. Okay, we're going to switch to reminders now. So I thought we did reminders at the beginning of the year. Um, I don't know, before the pandemic sometime. Did we? I, I, but it seems like two years ago. So It, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, reminders was totally redone um, this past year. Hmm. And so it's got a lot more features now. Um, so you can, you can use it for a lot of things. Um, just to give you the, the overview, this is also in the handout I sent you, but on the left sidebar, you have the search field so you can, you know, look for anything. Just type in what you want and it'll find it in your reminders. Um, then you've got these four boxes. These are smart lists. So anything I have due today appears here in the today. Anything I have scheduled for today or in future will appear here. I think if you schedule things in the past, they might also appear. Um, this is all of the reminders in the different lists that I have, just all of them in one place. And if I flag any of them, they appear here. Okay. The, um, you know, for the, all the task manager power users, these are not customizable. And that's where reminders kind of falls down for a lot of people. They want to customize their task management system. Okay, and below here, this, these are all my lists. So my to-do list is the main one, um, but I keep a running list of things that I, that I like to do with Matthew. So, you know, we got, we go to Dope Plantation every now and then. We love to go to the zoo and the aquarium, stuff like that. So whenever I find a good activity that I want to do with my son, then I, I put it in here. Um, things to eat, places that I found that I want to eat but haven't gone to yet. What's neat is you can, you can customize how these look. So you can tell I have different um, icons for all this. So my to-do list has like a, like a checklist kind of uh, icon. The things to do with, with my family, I've got like a little family icon i've got a fork and knife for things to eat these are really easy to customize so um when you create your list you know like if you add a new list like i don't know i don't know what i would add um shopping then i can right click and show info and here i can you know change the name or i can click here change the color of the icon and then let's see shopping i'm going to look for like a shopping cart okay so i've got that and click okay and then that kind of customizes the list okay and um so like i i created this list with for h h mouse items and i was going to share it with people so whenever you hover over your list you've got this um head icon i don't know what, what you call that so i can add people to this list and it asked me how I want to do that. So like I could, I can send like Joan a text message and add her to this list. So now if, if and when Joan accepts, then Joan, you're muted. Okay. Sorry, it, it just got to my iPhone, but I don't, okay, here we go. Okay, I shared okay. it with her. Yeah. I don't know why my messages aren't opening. Uh, Arlen, I got it. I got an okay. invitation in the mail. Oh. Okay. And it's the HTTP 
HTTPS uh, link to reminders. And so I'm clicking it and it says, do you want me to open it? And I clicked on open and, and, and it looks like you are in. Oh, there it is. I got it. Because apparently it's still broken. <laughs> Does it say that I did it? Uh, no, but I didn't do it. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think there's any way for me to know that you did it. That you created this. How funny is that? Okay. Get Joan into iCloud. That's funny. Yeah, I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so Arlen, uh -huh. you don't have to open up reminders to get these notices. You just go to either text or email, whichever way you sent it. Right. We're, just trying to, we're just trying to share this list. So right. What, but what it's we're sharing not in is, reminders. It won't be in reminders. It will be in either email or text when you share, right? Correct. Right. You're, you're deciding how you want to share this. So. <laughs> but I think her point is if she gets the invitation, she'll get it in the mail or she'll get it in a message. It won't, it's not like on calendar where there's a little place that says, oh, you have these invitations or something. Right. And I think we could even do it via airdrop if we were in the same room. Hmm. We could just use airdrop and that would probably be a much more efficient way to do it. Um, so you would just, you know, airdrop, you would get a little pop up on your screen and then you just tap it and, uh, you know, you could access the reminders list. So will the receiving person have anything in their reminder app that, that shows okay. that you did any of this? So what you'll get is you'll get, um, like I shared this H mouse list. So on, Ross, on your side, you now have this H mouse list in your reminders, correct? Yes, I do. And it says uh, shared by Arlen Nagato. Okay. And so if you are the original, the person who shares it, like I could, I can cut them off at any time. So if Ross wait, wait, puts wait. too many weird things in here, then I'm, <laughs> I'm going to cut them off. It's colorful. It's not weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I'm I'm not of course I'm not going to do that. But so as you can see like whatever he puts in this list appears on my screen. Uh -huh. Because we're sharing the list, right? Uh -huh. So this is a good like my groceries list is shared with my wife. So um whatever we want to put in here <laughs> You know, this, yeah, I, and this is my real grocery list. It's really because when we go to the grocery store, we, we split up. And so each of us have the list of what we want. Ah. And then uh, I can look and say, oh, she got the flour already because it's gone from the list because she'll, yeah. she'll click it off the moment she gets it. Yep. Divide mm -hmm. and conquer. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. and this is, this is kind of fun. It's kind of fun to share the list and then, um, you know, check them off. Can you add a image or something to the list? No an image. What do you mean? I, I don't think you can. Like a the photo or something. No. Like you can of? add you can add an image to a reminder. Like here, I can add photos. I think this is going to open my photos library. Oh, it's yeah, a little box to my photos library. I can add this photo of a water bottle. I'm really not sure if it's doing anything, <laughs> which is terrible. I added it out there. I just added an image to that new reminder. Oh, look. How did you do that, Ross? I went in to add image, and then I went to my library, which I already had open, so I didn't have to wait for it. I'm surprised you can't uh, take a photo away oh, your... It said it could. It just said image. Oh, there take you go. Photo. Yeah. This is a cool feature in, in between your, your Mac and your other devices. This is called continuity camera, something like that. But if I choose take photo, see it says take photo with uh, my iPad. Okay, so I've taken a photo and now it's gonna, it's gonna come in here. Okay, it added it. Yeah, it's a photo of my mouse, you know, nothing spectacular. Hmm. 
And quick look will let us preview that image, right? So that's the photo I took, this a photo of my Ooh, mouse. What a nice mouse. <laughs> it's, ac it's actually dying, so I'm going to have to buy a new one soon. Oh, that's pretty cool, adding image. Right, so adding an image from your iPad or your phone, it's a pretty, pretty neat feature. I see you can add a sketch too. What does that feature give you? Does that change? Oh, okay, it doesn't. Okay, now I, I just have to pick up my iPad or something, bring it closer to the computer. Um, add sketch. I've got the drawing tools. My handwriting is terrible. But so I made a sketch. Cute. And and then it comes in here, right? One of these one of these images should be the sketch. It'll take a it'll take a second to sync over. There it is. Hi everyone. Okay. Cool. So I'm using Quick Look, right? So if I highlight this image, just click on it once. And I can press the space bar, and that brings up a quick look. Ah, I like but, quick. Yeah, I, I love quick look too. So I'm gonna click on the eye, and for any of these reminders, you can set up a time or place you want to be reminded, or when messaging a person. This is kind of cool because if you, if I check this one and I add. Okay, so when I start messaging Joan, um, this reminder could come up. I love doing live demos because <laughs> you just never know if it's going to work or not. It's, act high, it's, Joan. it's actually trying to show up, but in Zoom, when you screen share, it turns off notifications. Do you see this? This reminder? Mm -hmm. It says image and reminder because you're messaging Joan. So that would have popped up right here. When I started messaging Joan, it would have popped up right here. Hmm. But notifications was turned off or, or on um, do, not, do not disturb. That's why this did not, you didn't see it pop up. But if I wasn't doing all this fancy screen sharing, recording stuff, you would have seen that pop up. <laughs> so will that reminder show up as a message? It will show up as a notification. Notification, okay. That's a good way to remind yourself, you know, because have you ever thought, you know, oh, I should ask Joan this question, but it's two in the morning. Oh, wait, Joan's probably still awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so you don't, you don't want to message her right then. You want to wait till, um, you know, you want to wait till it's a normal hour. But with Joan, you know, she, she is still up. But you could also set it so that when I go to Lowe's, remind me to ask for a refund on that bag of dirt. And then when you get right. to Lowe's, it'll pop up on your phone. I was yeah. trying to, I was trying to add that location for this, but okay, there it is. Lowe's. Okay, so when I arrive at Lowe's, this refund for dirt would pop up as a notification. Mm. Upgrading. Um, Catalina and later is still 64-bit. So if you have those, old, those older applications that are not 64-bit, you should never upgrade. So if you didn't upgrade to Catalina, you should not upgrade any, anymore. Um, if there was a reason you didn't upgrade to Catalina, the, the reason is the same that you shouldn't upgrade. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If there was a reason you didn't upgrade, it's still valid. <laughs> so don't, don't upgrade. Does anybody, yeah. know, does anybody here running a 64-bit program that prevents them from upgrading or doesn't anybody not know? Yeah, Microsoft a, a 32 -bit. Office. Yeah, Microsoft Office 2011, um, I read will not work. Right. Correct. Yeah. A, a friend taught me where to go and look and I can't remember where it was and it will list what will not work. 
-hmm. And Microsoft was the only program that came up that 2011. But it doesn't work anyway for me now. So. But that's Microsoft 2011, correct? Well, mine was 2007, I think. So it for sure. It's 2020. Oh. <laughs> Just as a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> upgrade. <laughs> hey, Ross, you've been working all this time. time. To upgrade. Yeah, yeah, I know. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I love print shop. No more print shop. Mm. There, shop. there are alternatives, okay. though, aren't there? I'm using Swift. Swift Publisher. That's working okay. Swift. Yeah, Biomaker so. Probably doesn't work either. What does file it? Maker? Oh, file Maker? Oh, FileMaker. I don't even remember which version I use, but I've tried all kinds of databases since, and I get them all mixed up. But I'm still on High Sierra because I don't want to give up some of these programs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that that's still a you know, you didn't upgrade because you have software or something that's not gonna work. So you know, you, sh you don't even think about upgrading. Mm. Um if it was more like a stability thing, because Catalina wasn't very stable. Um Big Sur looks okay. to be pretty stable. Um I'm running I'm running the beta. Since beta one, it has been not too bad. Beta two is a little bit better. It's there's still a lot that is you know it's still a beta, so it's doesn't work perfectly. But um, I think by the time it comes out in October, uh, it should be pretty good. Hmm. Oh, the new one. I can't remember what it's called. It's the new one. Okay. Alan, yeah. I, I have a question that's kind of related to something new that might be coming up. Is Lana Kila um, approached us again to ask for help with their seniors, but this time what they're saying is they've got a group of uh, a woman with a group of teens who are wanting to help the seniors. So our job would be to help the teens to help the seniors. Yeah, but as I recall, when we did it the last time, they were all over the place in terms of their iOS. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it was kind of difficult to teach multiple iOSs. So w with iOS 13, what do you think? Is it like a big jump where most of them will not be on it? Or what do you think it's going to involve for us if we choose to take this challenge? Um, what kind of iOSs do you think we're going to need? They're mostly not on the Mac. They're mostly on a portable device. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, the same challenge would apply. They're, they're going to have whatever version they have. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine you have everything from 10, maybe 9, 9 to 13. Uh -huh. And, and okay. would you recommend that they upgrade as far as their device can handle as a rule? I mean, it's still up to them. The hard part is like when you upgrade, it's you know it tends to seem like things are slower mm. than before. I think iOS 12 was the one that tried to speed things up. So the problem is I don't think you can go to 12 anymore. I think if they're going to upgrade. Um, I think they have to go with the current version. Oh, wow. Right, because when you check for software updates, it's not going to give you every option imaginable, right? It's only going to give you the current, the current version. Huh. And you can so, upgrade from any version to the current version, generally speaking? Um, generally speaking, yes. I okay. think... Um, an iPhone SE or iPhone SE is like a six. iPhone six is not mm -hmm. going to be upgradable to to the latest one, but I think probably a seven or eight iPhone seven or eight and later you can probably upgrade to the latest version. Can I ask a show of hands the people who are present today whether you're on the current or you stay on the current version 
of the iOS. Just kind of raise your hand if you tend to do that. I've got my hand up. Like, you mean the most, the latest, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm, maybe half and half, yeah. But I not on the Mac, I haven't gone to Catalina. I'm kind of nervous to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Lita, are you using anything that would prevent you from upgrading, or are you just worried about the stability of it? At iOS. Um, the only thing was the Microsoft, but um, I think I'm probably going to do it pretty soon. So I just refuse to pay for that Microsoft to the cost to, you know, mm -hmm. reinstall it. Yeah, uh, you know what the secret is? What? Okay, this, this fall, go to the UH and sign up for a Kapuna class. Uh -huh. So you can enter almost any course at the UH for free. Uh -huh. Once the other students have registered, mm -hmm. like I, I took drawing, right? Okay, you are a UH student at that point, and you can buy the student version. Oh. But, yeah, but when I tried to get the UH um, student mm -hmm. version, the box version of Office, the only thing I could get was the online 365. Uh -huh. And it's, it's fine. I just don't know how long it's going to keep working now that the semester is over. And it's, it's kind of like a washed out version. I don't know. Somehow I'm, I'm not as happy with it, but it's good enough for what I do. Or we can all learn pages. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. That would be a good one to do next. I can yeah. do that. I can teach pages. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay. okay. Tag your it, Ross. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, well, just kind of, I'm sorry, one more show of hands. If we take on this project with Lana Kila, is there anybody who would be interested in helping us? We, we've got to, I think we've got to go through sort of identifying strategies for seniors, <laughs> us, and then an, another thing, strategies for working with teenagers, and then the curriculum. Okay, what do we want these seniors to learn? so that we can help develop some materials for them, for the, for the young people. I think the hard thing for teenagers is they're like so many light years away from us. <laughs> the way they teach, they expect you to know all the language. Um, they expect you to understand when they jump from one thing to another. So I think that that's going to be the difficulty for them because they have no clue where we started, you know, or where we are, you know, it's just such a huge gap. Right. So I think that it's more that we'll have trouble, the seniors, and then if they're intimidated by a, a young person who's talking fast, they're not going to ask the question, mm -hmm. you know, or, or say slow down or wait, you know, like if they get completely lost. So, yeah. yeah. So the, those are some things I think we need to identify. Yeah. And, and use it. I, I I'll, I'll volunteer. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Marcy. Yeah, good. I, I, yeah, well, okay, well. The three, okay, the three of us will do it. <laughs> no, no, no. But anybody who has any knowledge, Arlen knows youth now, you know, so that, and he knows seniors. So, and Ross. Oh, yeah, knows. that's a, the gap yeah. guy. Okay, all right, thank <laughs> you. Here, wait, B, here's a test for all of you. If you all know what this term is, for, for this icon and you know what icon it is for the term, then you've got to volunteer. And the test is, do you all know, any of you know what a hamburger is? The of course, thing. I do. Oh, then you all have to help Joan. Because <laughs> <laughs> these young kids know what hamburgers are on, when you, on those icons on the computer screen. <laughs> well, when, one of my friends just texted me that, um, you know, the poop, icon the, the poop the brown poopy one she thought it was a soft ice cream chocolate in some places <laughs> it is I got, I got one for you this lady in our building that i helped because i talked her into getting a max so anytime she calls me i feel guilty so i drop everything and run up you know the the, the icon for the for the camera she says oh you mean that little thing that looks like a water bottle on its side and i went oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got Arlen, thank you so much. Okay. Did did anybody was I gonna do um utilities? Did anybody want any of those? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. 
Yeah, sure. If you if you have to go, don't feel bad. Get, you know, just just wave goodbye and go. But yes, I'd like to see those utilities. All right, tell me which one because we can oh. start with <laughs> Alfred is my favorite, so that would be my suggestion. Yeah, we did Alfred in January, but I don't know that anybody reminds re remembers. I'd still like to see it. Yeah, yeah. I I was not here. You know. Okay, good because it's a good one. Yeah. Okay, so let me, I'll go back to sharing the screen. <clears throat> All right, let me quit out of these guys. Okay, so you guys know what Spotlight is, right? So if you press Command Space, you get Spotlight and you can search for, for anything you want. Alfred, Alfred is just building on Spotlight and doing a little bit more with it. Um, so if you're, if you're not used to it. I didn't get that. Nope. Could you try again? Okay, Siri. <laughs> I must have said something that sounds like so. Siri. Okay, so my recommendation is like, We'll take a look at Alfred, but you really want to start maximizing Spotlight first. So with Spotlight, command space, and you can start. This is the way I, I taught you guys to launch applications, right? So if you want to launch a notes app, you just type in, you push return, and then it then it starts. Say that again. Sorry, I missed. Okay, so command space brings up this box mm -hmm. with the search. Right. Okay. So if you want to start an application, pick it, lead a, pick an application that I probably have on my computer, like um, pages, pages. So I'm going to push command space and type pages. I probably only have to type a couple letters. P A pulls up pages and I can press return. Ah. Okay. Got it. So to me, and my computer is going to be a little bit slow, but when I pressed command space, uh, Siri came up. I think um, press it quickly. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah. So if you, that's it. I I just found that out too. If you press and hold command space, you get Siri. But if you just quick quickly tap uh, command space, then you get um, you get spotlight. Okay. Uh, so spotlight spotlight can do all kinds of things in your computer. Um, if I show you everything spotlight can do, I'm I'm going to go to system preferences. So I went Apple system preferences and spotlight. Okay, so this is everything Spotlight can do. Applications, that's what I just showed you. You can look up contacts. So, you know, I can look up Joan. And it's not looking, okay. It's just thinking. Go. My computer's very slow today. So if I look up a contact, I can now just click on message and her phone number and then I'm I'm gonna message her. Okay, so messages opens up and I can start typing that message. Mm. Okay, so real fast, right? Um, calculator, that's another good one. So if I bring up spotlight um, and I just want to do some quick math, right? 562 times 23. Okay, so can you really copy that, that answer then? Yeah, uh, I think so. I don't know what I typed in before, but Spotlight searching can do a whole lot of stuff. So if you don't want to pay any money, this is probably where you should start. Just command space and start searching for different things. Arlen, wh while you're there, can I ask what are the keyboard shortcuts down at the lower left hand corner? 
Oh, this of one? that screen. This one. Yeah. The four spotlight. Your, okay. All of yours probably says command space, and that's what I keep saying verbally. But what I'm actually pushing on my keyboard is not command space because I put Alfred, you know, Alfred is the butler on Batman. And it's, it's supposed to be something like that where Alfred does all these things for you. Mm. Right? Okay, so there's Alfred. Is he a quiet Siri? He just like Spotlight. So this is Spotlight, mm. right? And this is Alfred. Okay. And and basically, if you if you get the um, the free version, Alfred does basically everything Spotlight does, and then only adds a few things. Um, So what I'm just doing is I'm searching for the file because I just wanted to open that file. This is, these are my notes. S to me, Spotlight, Spotlight can search for files. Um, let's see if it'll come up. Okay, so the features in Alfred and Spotlight are overlap a, a great deal. So you have to figure out when you might want to upgrade to Alfred. Does that make sense? Yes. So you should just you should just start using Spotlight. And if you ever want to know what Spotlight can do, the Apple system preferences and this is the list of all the things it can do, like definitions. There we go. Avocado. So, description is down definition is down below definition is down here so i'm using the arrow keys to go through these mm -hmm. and then i you can get a definition mm. so alfred does pretty much all of these things why would so, you so want to use alfred why, why would we want to use it i think alfred is better at at file searching so you saw me you saw me look for um that file uh, mac utility apps I think Alfred is a little faster with, with searching for files. Um, Alfred searches the web really well. I know none of you shop on Amazon. I set up Alfred to, if I press the A and then I, a space and then anything after this, I'm going to search Amazon to find something, right? Like, um, what do I want to buy on Amazon? Face masks. So that's going to just pull up, oh, this. Do, an, do an instant search into Amazon. So does Spotlight uh, have those shortcuts too? Can you set it up in Spotlight like that? No, Spotlight is not real customizable like that. Like in, okay. in Spotlight, you could probably go to Amazon.com and hit return. And it, I think it should open up the website, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Oh, there it is. Okay. So Spotlight can open a website, just a site. Alfred will be able to search in that site. Does that does this make sense? Yes. Yes. It's like a a deeper shortcut. A deeper shortcut, right? So Alfred can also search into. Um, Gmail, so if I type Gmail space uh, MacLearn, this is actually trying to go through my school email and it's, it's not going to find anything. But can you see what I did? So yes, 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 yes. It, yes. From here, from doing something in Microsoft Word or Pages or just on the desktop, wherever I am, I can just push the shortcut for Alfred, type Gmail space, and then something like something I want to look for uh, and then it's going to go into searching Gmail for me. Those power power searching features are what um, Alfred does really well. Alfred also does um, I guess system commands. So if I type, uh, sorry I can't type, empty, it'll empty the trash for me. 
And to my knowledge, Spotlight doesn't have a command like that where I can just go in and empty the trash. Um, I could do screensaver and it'll start the screensaver uh, sleep, put the computer to sleep. So those kind of, those kind of, if, if you like to just um, type those kind of things and then let it, let it happen. Those are pretty nice. Okay. So those are, th that's what you could do. If, if that searching thing is all you get Alfred for, it, it might be worth it. Um, if you do a lot of shopping I don't know, or <laughs> searching your Gmail. Okay. And these are all the things that you can search for. Um, drive. I use Google Drive a lot. And this is just to remind me what I can search for, right? So drive, space, rental, contract. So that's going to search through all through my Google Drive. So I, I don't know if you guys are like power users of Google Drive. Schools and a lot of businesses use Google for a lot of things. So we basically put everything in Google. Um, I set up a couple of custom ones. So this is getting into the paid, um, the paid area. So Pastor Bob, you might like this. B Space would only open a Bible passage. So like John 11, totally, I don't know, totally geeky, but it's, it's a time saver, right? So if you, if you're kind of a power user, you want to just start searching for things quickly. Um, instead of opening this website, typing in here, clicking the search button, you know, I can just search, um, And then it just, you know, it just pops up. Arlen, I have, um, Alfred, I have the paid version, but I didn't know I could do that. So thank you for showing me that. Yeah, yeah. So I can show you how to set this up later, um, but it's down here, add a custom search. And you just have to figure out uh, this, this thing, <laughs> whatever this is, and you can, um, you can search for that. So really any website you go to, you can do that kind of search. If you're into movies, you probably search IMDB. So that would work here. Hamilton, since that was brought up earlier. Okay, and we can find that, that movie. This searching thing, it's really cool. Um, if you start to get used to this, it's, it's really cool. If you get into the paid features like um, the clipboard history is indispensable for me. I think every single person needs a clipboard manager. So whether you use Alfred or you use um, Paste or uh, Copy Clip, I don't know, there's, there's like a ton of pay, uh, clipboard managers. But do um, you guys know what a clipboard manager is? No. Okay, so a clipboard manager your clipboard usually only stores one item, right? So if I copy this, I can, I can paste it wherever I want, right? But if I then copy something else, I can paste the last thing I, I copied. But what if I wanted to copy, what if I want to paste this calendars, reminders, and turbo apps? It's gone, right? I, you can't do it. But with a clipboard manager, it saves everything you've copied, however you set it up. Like, I think it's, I think I have it set up to like the last hundred things or seven days worth of copying. So if I wanted to paste that thing I copied earlier, it's right here. And then if I wanted to paste um, the Zoom link for the meeting today, I copied that you know, hours ago, but that's here. Uh, how are you invoking this uh, app? Okay, so Alfred has a shortcut. Viewer hotkey, oh. option command C. So when I push that, I get this list. You can also see I've got um, shortcuts here for uh, 
command one, command two, command three. Mm. So that that makes it faster to, you know, do my shortcut and then command three, paste in whatever was the third item. Whereas like the shortcut command five was that number we just copied from the calculator. Okay, so okay, anyway, you. I think everybody needs a clipboard manager because we all copy things. And if you copy a second thing, just on a normal Mac, whatever you copied previously is just gone. You, there's no way to get it back. But with a clipboard manager, you can go back in time. Um, so, you know, it, you'll find different uses for that. What does Alfred cost? That's a good question. The problem is Alfred <laughs> is uh, international. So let's see, 25 lira, is that, is that what it costs? Pounds. Pounds, okay. I, I, okay. And so 25. Hey Siri, how much is 25 pounds in American money? Yeah. 25 British pounds is $31.42. Okay, so there you have it, $31.42. A year. Um, a version. Oh. Oh. So you can buy a version and just keep using that version. It's like any other software. Um, you know, I, I love the app, so I'm a quote unquote mega supporter, right? So I get free lifetime upgrades. Um, so I probably started with Alfred version two and this is version four, I think. And I did, you just keep getting the upgrades. So mm -hmm. whichever is worth it for you. Oh, it's not a monthly thing. So you buy either one. No, not a monthly thing. You, you buy it once and you've got it. So if you, if you just wanna pay the um, 25 pounds, you can keep using that forever until, you know, Mac OS upgrades beyond what you can use, you know, beyond mm -hmm. that point where you can't use it. So, but yeah, so this is like the whole list of all the, um, all the features. And most of these are, um, most of these are, are in the paid version. So there's things like snippets. If you um, if you ever looked at an, an app like Text Expander, you might be able to get away with just using snippets because hmm. it's kind of like the basic features in Text Expander. Arlen, uh -huh. is, um, is this would this be good for searching your documents that you have on your computer? Okay. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that you could do that. You could you could also do that with Spotlight. Yes. Sometimes like, what, like doesn't work too well for that though I noticed. That that's what I that's what I feel like too. So yeah. Alfred is actually pretty good. So um you know, you saw me search for a few of these documents. Um calendar. Oh. Calendar. So I was looking for that handout that Joan sent out. It comes up it comes up pretty fast. Thank you. I, I find the Alfred file searching to be very good. Uh, how does it compare to just doing Command F from the desktop? You know, the Finder? Because that get, brings you all your documents. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, you can do that. But you have to be in a Finder window. Yeah. So, like, with, with Alfred, you could be doing anything, right? So mm. I could just be on my desktop, and I could just pull up um that handout that we were working on so but if i was like if i was in a finder window yeah command f and then that's that's going to pull it up too it's not going to automatically select it or open it for me 
So it's just the speed that you can do do different things. And then can I ask a, a, a spotlight question? You know, yeah. the spotlight gives you all those things that it's going to search in the web, whatever, whatever. But documents is the most common thing that I'm going to uh -huh. look for. But it's like way down. Is there any way to reorder those things in the list, the spotlight list? I try not, to not like, yeah, not like iOS. Mm, okay. Um, you. What you can do is if you don't use a lot of these, you can uncheck them. Right. And that could make Spotlight faster. And if you're like a super, super power user of the app, you can create your own workflows. So these are like infinitely customizable um, things you can add to Alfred. So I use Asana a lot. And I can quickly add tasks here. Okay, so there's my new buy a new fan task. To be honest, I don't use remind I use reminders a little for my personal stuff, but Asana is like our work team um task system. So um I can use that use it pretty quickly right from the um Alfred Alfred bar. Does that kind of give you an idea of, of why you would use that? Yeah. Makes sense. It's a doer. <laughs> yep. Alfred, he's the butler. He, he'll yeah. do anything Makes you sense. want. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, but yeah, if you want to start with Spotlight and just um, start to use Spotlight, and if you start to hit a wall or you're like, oh, I wish this could be a little bit better, then make the jump to Alfred. Fantastic. Good. Thank you. Um, uh, does Does anybody else have a request from the list of, of apps that he was going to um, hopefully show us? I know that we're, we're at two hours right now, but <laughs> and thank you for your personal account so we could go longer. But does anybody have a request of the other, from the other things? I, I, I have one just because the name's so funny. Can you tell us about Yoink? All right, so if I just start to drag files, it'll appear. When I drag to the left edge, it appears. And that'll just hold that for me. One, one use case is like, if you ever, ever tried to drag files and go into a different folder, Like, okay, so if I want to go to iCloud Drive, and then I want to put this in a different folder in here, like maybe this folder, and then it's going to open another folder, and I'm still holding the mouse button. I'm trying to find where I want to drop this thing. It's kind of a pain, like, mm to drag files into, into another folder. Um, especially if you have to go into like subfolders and subfolders and things like that. So if you just drag it, drag your files here onto the, the yoink sidebar, then in your finder window, you can just, you can click and go to that folder that you wanted to go to, right? I forget where I was, downloads, I think. Oh, well, let's go in here. All right, and if I just go into like, I don't know, three levels down, I can just drag this out of here and drop it in there. So it, it's a placeholder, right? It just you, holds things you, for you. Do you have to take all 10 of them or can you take a few of them? I think I can click on it. Double click, nope, oops, nope, that opened preview. Um, Okay. Split but, up stack. Yeah, split up stack. That's going to split into 10 items. Okay. What's the so, one below it? Yeah. And then now I can do like, oh, did I still have all of them selected?
then I could get one of them out. Wow, okay. But can you add I, to that selection? Let's see. You like control now click can, and choose. Command, command, um, click, yeah. There you go. What are these options here? So once I split up the stack, I don't think I can get it back together again. What's that third option? Lock. L it's a lock. lock. Oh, okay. The other good use I found for this is, so um, this stack here is two files, and I'm constantly emailing these two files. So um, I, you can you can set up Yoink in one of two ways. You can set it up where, if you drag the file out it clears it and it no longer uh. is, remains here, right? Um, or you can have it so that when you drag it out, it stays there. And that to me is more useful. And if I wanna clear it out, I'll just click the X. But so the, the other thing I found useful is like, if I'm in email and I, I've gotta send these two files out constantly, I hate going back into Finder and I have to scroll through this list because it's not just one file that I want to attach, it's two. And the two files are always like kind of in the same area. Does that make sense? And yes. so now, now I'm gonna drag this into a mail message and attach those two files. Whereas if I keep it here, uh, it's just always gonna be available to me. Right, so. Can um, you can you click on those two and drag it down to the mail, um, the mail app icon and launch mail with those in it? Um, you know, because I don't use mail, I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. I can try it with Outlook, which is we're a Microsoft school, so so that's interesting. So I did that. I dragged it in, Are but I only got one. There? I only got one. Isn't that mm -hmm. weird? I only got one attachment. But this is what I would gener generally do is like start a new mail message and then drag these files in oh, and then, and then send way. this, right? Mm. So yeah, they both came in that way. But mm. dragging it onto the uh, app icon, I only got one. Mm. That was interesting. I, I didn't realize that would happen. Mm -hmm. So you're uh, physically moving the file then. So it moves out of the previous location into the shelf and then into wherever you're dragging it does it take it out or does it yeah just, a copy. just copy it there so um that's also a preference so you can set it up to an alias uh let's see this is the one remove items when dragged out so if i drag it out i i don't like that so i have it unchecked um well i guess it's not a preference it's a preference in one of the other other apps that does this mm. but it's it just does. it's just copying it over right i mean it's not removing it from your files it's like an alias yeah it's probably Let's making try. an alias there no they're still there they're still there i don't know what happened to the other the other um file though the other file I dragged in here? The three, yeah. Yeah, and then I dragged it out. Okay, that actually moved it. So I'm not sure why the single file, oh, did that move it too? No, it's no longer there. Mm. So it's actually, it's actually moving the files. Mm -hmm. So it's on your desktop now? Mm. Yeah. Up here? So you'd have to drag it back into... I'd have to drag it back in here if I want to bring them back. How do you remember where it was? <laughs> <laughs> you search for it with Alfred. <laughs> what is this little broom sweepy thing? That will clear all the, all the files in here. Oh. Oh. And where would they go? Where they That's started. Okay. Unless you drag it to desktop before. Unless you drag it to another location, yeah. It, what I think how this is intended to be used is 
just temporary, right? Drag mm -hmm. it in here, find a different folder you want to move it to, and then drag it out, right? I think that's how it, it was um, intended to be used. Mm -hmm. I like to the leave them here because it just, it makes attaching files really easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I go for that. You can use this in photos, like if you're looking from a, for four photos from five different albums, it's a good way to pull them over yeah. and then email it later, right? Uh, like in your Photos app? Yeah. I've, I've not tried that. Because that's the thing is like, you want to send four photos, but each one, when you want to do it, you have to put it into an album and then, you know, right. send right. it as a so group. Drag it in here and eventually it goes in there. <laughs> it takes okay. a little while. And then we could drag it out into something else. But you could put, if you, let's say, took four different photos, not, and then put it in, is it a grouping or then you have to? Yeah, let's try it. And four then, photos. Four yeah. photos. It should be a stack. It should become a stack. Okay, but then if you have yeah, one photo go. from another album, you know how you have to go search for another one in another place. Uh huh. And then you pull a single over. Yeah, can you add it to the stack? Yeah, can you add it to the stack? That's good. Thanks, Joan. <laughs> It it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's just going to create another stack. And I, I'm trying like keyboard, like using command or option um, to see if this would change, but it doesn't seem to change. Mm, doesn't open up so. Yeah. But at the very <laughs> least, at the very least, you could have them all here. Yeah. I like that. And you could grab both of them at the same time to move them, yeah? Since you can select and, more. Right. Than one. You can click and select multiple ones to drag ah, them out. That's good. Then it goes all together. Oh, that's good. You know, I what? like that. I like this, that. It looks like it's two ninety nine, but it might be worth the price of admission just to once a month clean up that messy desktop of yours. <laughs> going for seven ninety nine, not two ninety nine. Seven ninety nine? Oh, maybe on the Mac? Maybe iOS is two ninety nine. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a iOS version too. Mm -hmm. Not not as useful on iOS. Yeah, I was thinking, where are your files anyway? That always confuses me. Yes, me too. Me too. 